हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल माई सेल पराग जांबुलकर इन पैरल कंप्यूटिंग और इन हाई परफॉर्मेंस कंप्यूटिंग वी यूज मेनी टेक्नोलॉजीज फॉर एग्जांपल डिकम्पोजिशन टास्क टास्क डिपेंडेंसी ग्राफ टास्क इंट्रेक्शन ग्राफ गैनुलरिटी ए टी सी ऑल दिस कंसेप्ट आर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन पैरल कंप्यूटिंग यू मे फाइंड ऑल दिस कंसेप्ट एंड डिटेल अबाउट इन दिस फेमस बुक ऑन पैरल कंप्यूटिंग That is introduction to parallel computing by Anant Grama, Anshul Gupta, George Carrier Pieces, and Vipin Kumar. So just we will go through the these concepts. So one common concept that is used in parallel computing is the decomposition. So when we have a large computation, what do we do? We divide into the small computation and we allocate the small computation to the different processors or different cores, and that is called as the decomposition. Or in other words, if you have a very big problem, so we divide into the sub problems and we allocate the sub problems to the different processors of course, and all are some of them we execute them parallelly. This is called as the decomposition. When we divide big problem into the small problem or big computation into the small computation, that small computation is called as a task. Now see, next we'll see task dependency graph. Look at this. This is called as a task dependency graph. This is the example of finding minimum element among this array. Now see how sequential algorithm works when there are various elements are there. So in sequential algorithm, what we do? We take minimum first element as a minimum element, then we compare with the another one. So 12 is minimum than 23, so we consider 12 as a minimum element. Then again we compare with the third element. So nine and twelve. So nine is minimum. So now we will replace twelve by nine. So now nine is a minimum element. Next time we compare nine with thirty. So thirty uh, nine is minimum than the thirty. So we'll consider nine as a minimum element. Then again we will compare nine with thirty-seven. So nine is a minimum. So we'll keep nine as a minimum element. Likewise we'll compare with all the numbers or all the elements. So we do comparison one by one. This is the sequential algorithm or serial algorithm. Now see, definitely, if there are n elements, it will take n unit of time. So to avoid that, we can execute it parallelly. So see, parallel algorithm to finding the main minimum element among this array is like this. So what we'll do, we'll form a pair of numbers. So we'll form pair of, we'll create pair of these two numbers. Then we will create pair of these two numbers then we will create pair of these two numbers and similarly you can create pair of these two numbers we will find minimum from this pair minimum from this pair minimum from this pair minimum from this pair now see 23 and 12 who is minimum 12 9 and 30 who is minimum 9 37 and 27 who is minimum 27 8 and 70 who is minimum 8 now see Again, we will find out the minimum. So 12 and 9, who is minimum 9? And 27 and 8, who is minimum 8? So finally, we will find out minimum from these two. So 8 is the minimum among all. Now see, all these, these are called as a task. So that was our problem to find the minimum number among the given array of elements or given the set of elements. So we are divided into the small, small task. So this is called as a task. This is a task. This is a task. Now see, there are, so these tasks will run parallelly, after that these two tasks will run parallelly and after that there is only single task. Now see, there are, so uh, to work out that we require only three unit of time, one for this, then for this one and this for one. So initially we require around eight unit of time, now we require just three unit of time. You may ask, there are seven tasks, but why we are not doing all the seven tasks parallelly? We can't do it because the tasks are dependent on each other. Now look at this. These four tasks we can complete parallelly or simultaneously, but these two tasks are dependent on output of these tasks. So these tasks are dependent on these two tasks. These tasks are dependent on two tasks. While this task is dependent on this two tasks. So the tasks are dependent on each other. So some tasks require the output from the other task. 
that's why we cannot perform all the tasks parallelly so this task can be done parallelly and these two tasks can be done parallelly as these are not dependent on each other but this task is dependent on this task so this is called a task dependency graph where node is a task here node is a task while this age represents a dependency dependency in the sense this node or this task is dependent on this so this it is represented by arrow or h so this is called as task dependency graph now see there is one more concept called as the granularity and what granularity means so granularity is defined by number and size of the task into which problem is decomposed so after decomposing a big problem into the small problems or small tasks whatever the size and number of the task it defines granularity now look at the example here two matrices are there this is a one matrix and this is a single dimensional matrix or you can say it is a vector so it is a 12 by 12 matrix and it is 12 by 1 matrix now see we are multiplying this matrix with this matrix so resultant matrix is this now see what we are doing we are finding the value of this first cell we are allocating to the one thread so that thread what we will do it will compute over this row and this column and resultant will be here so this into this plus this into this plus this into this likewise it will calculate and we will get the first value now we are dividing into the small small tasks so see first thread will do that task second thread will do that task third thread uh, that sub process will do that task fourth thread will do this task this is called as a smaller granularity as whatever the task we are getting there is a small in size so this is called as a smaller granularity now see look at this example here what we are doing calculation of this first three values we are giving to one thread then to compute this three values we are giving to the another cell another thread then co to compute this three values we are providing to the another thread and last three values will provide to the another thread so one thread will work on this another thread will work on this third thread will work on this and fourth thread will work on this so here task i is larger compared to this example so that's why we say it has a larger granularity again similar concepts are there there is one concept called as the fine grain decomposition fine grain decomposition in the sense when we are decomposing de decomposing into small tasks so as we are decomposing into the small tasks so number of small tasks will be larger we are decomposing into small tasks so definitely the number of small tasks will be larger so such kind of decomposition is called as a fine grain decomposition where the tasks are smaller and as tasks are smaller there will be large number of this task while similarly there is one more term called as a coarse grain decomposition in coarse grain decomposition task size will be larger so we have large task as tasks are larger there will be small number of the tasks so see here one thread will perform this another thread will be perform this uh, then uh, perform this like way so this is called as coarse grain decomposition now we will see the next concept or next technology concurrency so as you know concurrency in the sense when we are executing multiple tasks simultaneously so we call it concurrency now see maximum degree of concurrency maximum degree of concurrency means at max how many tasks we are executing simultaneously that is called as a maximum degree of concurrency for example look at this here there are seven tasks but at max now see here only one task is there at one time instance here we are executing two tasks at a time and here we are executing three tasks simultaneously so what is the maximum number of tasks which we are performing parallelly or which we are executing parallelly or simultaneously 
is called as maximum degree of concurrency so in this example maximum of degree of concurrency is 4 why 4 because these are the four tasks which maximum number of four tasks which are running simultaneously maximum degree of concurrency is dependent on dependency among the tasks so if there are larger dependency among the tasks so we'll have lesser maximum degree of concurrency now there is one more concept called as the average degree of concurrency so over the period of time what is the average number of tasks they are running simultaneously it is called as average degree of concurrency now to calculate average degree of concurrency we require these two concepts critical path and critical path length just we will see by this example now look at this example this is the load of that particular task so here this is a node represents a task and this is a dependency means this task is dependent on these two tasks and this is a load or workload of that particular task so it takes suppose 10 units of work it takes 10 units of work it takes 6 units of work like that now critical path is the distance between the start path and the start node and finish node so start node are those nodes which doesn't have any incoming edge that is called as a start node while finish node is that node which doesn't have any outgoing edge so that is called as a finish node so these are the start node and this is the finish node now critical path is that path it is a path from start node to the finish node but with a maximum width large width so that is called as a critical path now see this is a 10 plus 9 is 19 plus 8 27 again this is 27 here is a 16 and it is 24 so here is a 27 while it is the 24 so critical path in this case will be this either this or this and the path between start node and finish node has a larger weight so that's why this is a critical path this is a critical path okay so longest directed path between any pair of start and finish node is known as a critical path Path. Now see, sum of all these weights of nodes along the critical path is known as a critical path link. So see, in this example, we have seen this is a critical path because this is the longest path because 10 plus 9, 19 plus 8, 27, while it is a 24. So this are this. This is a critical path and critical path link will be the addition of this weight. So see, critical path length in this case will be 27. Again, both are the same. So critical path length will be 27. Now see, average degree of concurrency is calculated by this formula. Total amount of work divided by critical path length. So see, in this example, total amount of work is 63. Why 63? Addition of all 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 9 plus 9 6 plus 8 so it becomes 63 what is the critical path length 27 from where we got 27 10 plus 9 19 plus 8 27 so average degree of concurrency will be 63 divided by 27 so that is the average degree of concurrency now look at this example so here what is the total amount of work so addition of everything so 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 6 plus 11 plus 7 it becomes 64 what is critical path length now see what will the critical path so see these are the start node while this is the finish node now it is a 17 only here it is a 21 plus 7 so it will be 28 while this is a 10 plus 6 that's 16 plus 11 27 27 plus 7 34 so this is a critical path which is the longest path from start node to finish node so this is also critical path and this is also critical path now critical path length will be the addition of all this weight so critical path length will be the 34 10 plus 6 plus 11 plus 7 it becomes 34 so addition of these two sorry uh, every degree of concurrency will be 64 divided by 34 so that you get 1.88 that is the average degree of concurrency in this case now see we will consider previous example 
so so task dependency graph is up to here only so see suppose for each task requires one unit of work so what will the average degree of concurrency in this example now see what is the total work so suppose each task takes one unit of work so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 and what is the critical path so see this can be critical path 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 so all these are the critical path only so critical path length will be 1 2 3 because we are considering one unit of work at it task so 1 2 3 1 2 3 so critical path length will be 3 total work is 7 so average degree of concurrency in this example will be 7 divided by 3 now see so there are some concepts along with that so speed up speed up that uh, formula is given like this whatever the serial execution time required divided by for the same problem for same algorithm parallel execution time so speed up is calculated like that serial execution time divided by parallel execution time when we are executing it serially so what time it requires divided by parallel execution time so that it gives speed up and there is one more concept called as a task interaction graph so initially we have seen task dependency graph now this is the task interaction graph task interaction graph in the sense where nodes are interacting with each other we are not saying those are ta nodes are dependent on each other they are interacting with each other in the sense they are sharing some information for example look at this in matrix multiplication this is a one task this is another task now see all the tasks are independent so if you plot task dependency graph so task dependency graph of this problem will have will not have any edges why it will not have any edge as there is no dependency among the task all the tasks are independent but if you plot task interaction graph then there will be edges why because see this task how it is calculating is taking this value and this value to calculate this value another task what it will do it will take this value and this value now see all the tasks they are using are sharing this common information so there is a interaction between the tasks for sharing this information so uh, uh, plotting this as a graph called as a task interaction graph where nodes are interacting with each other so it is called as task interaction graph so all these are the concepts important concepts in parallel computing so friends i hope you like this video if it is then click on like subscribe to this channel and don't forget to press bell icon so that you will get notification of my next video so stay connected. Thank you.